guys, welcome to American Beer TV, and we've got some beer news for you today, uh, for pretty much for the month of May. So yeah, yeah, there's been some cool stuff going on, and we wanted to bring it to you as normal. Now, before we get started, let's uh, talk about a little bit about what we're drinking here, because sometimes we Wookie Jack, yeah, Wookie Jack. You know? Hey, so we so we did a video on Wookie yeah. Jack, and it just totally blew us away. Blew Everyone us away. we've been getting a lot of good comments, like totally Everyone just laughing. I was like, I saw your video. Yeah, and you guys were went nuts over mm -hmm. Wookie Jack. So the next day, I went to my reps and I ordered a keg of Wookie Jack. Nice. So now I've got it on trap. Yeah, we've got it on tap. So <laughs> I had to have it. It's still got that dankness in there. Still wonderful beer. Just an awesome, awesome dark I black IPA. Yeah. Uh, black rye IPA right. with a little spice in there. And you can this pick up that spiciness. This beer's it. awesome. It is absolutely epic. So definitely try to track down some Wookie Jack. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Of course, we had the Tons of we had the craft there. beer conference and craft beer week. So in San Diego, Diego, yeah, yeah. So craft brewers conference drew like everybody. I mean, except us, unfortunately, <laughs> we weren't able to go this time. Um, would have loved to go down there, but uh, the you know there was just tons of people and tons of stuff. And I think the biggest highlight of craft um, brewers conference is the announcements of the winners of the World Beer Cup. Uh, and also the Brewers Association's uh, statistics. That's where those come out. Yeah. So wanted to kind of go over some of those with you guys. So um, first of all, we've got to give a, uh, speaking of Firestone Walker, we got to give a big shout out to Matthew uh, Brynielsen. Yeah, that I think a, he's yeah. said it about right. It's um, as good as you're going to get. Yeah. Um, he took uh, best brewer for mid-sized breweries. Mid-sized brewery, so awesome. yeah, totally, so, and we can see why. So, um, some of the other breweries that that won were uh, not American brewers, so we're a little biased. We focus yeah, on American brewers. Care about that. Yeah. So, um, so what were some stats? The, the stats I, we, we were, were going doing. over that. Um, I see you wrote down some stats. Yeah. What's happened over this last year? I know. I know the Brewers Association kind of releases stuff every mm -hmm. quarter. But we didn't really. La I know last year we we uh, talked about a lot of the stats that happened in 2010. Yeah. But for 2011, there was a huge amount of growth again for craft brewery. I mean, um, there's two different ways to measure uh, craft beer growth by volume, by in terms of the amount of beer sold, or by dollars. Yeah. And they're both up. They're both up. You know, in the double digits, which is awesome. By volume, it's 13% in 2011, and by dollars, it's up 15% in 2011. Eleven. So, both of those are exceptional stats, especially when you consider that the overall U.S. beer market dropped by 1.3 percent. So, what this means is that craft beer is starting to take over the macros. So. Well, I think we got a long way to go. Well, to say not take, take over, over, but but they're incre the the, 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 macros the macros are losing market share. Decrease, we increase. Right. So, the, so the the pie is shrinking, and our chunk of it is getting bigger. So, those are both good signs yeah. for craft beer. So, uh, good way to put it there. I think it's just overall knowledge of all of us. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. if you're watching this program, you're involved in craft beer in yep. one way or another, whether you're, you know, you know, selling it or drinking it or whatever. So you obviously love craft beer like we or do. making it or you're yeah. a brewer or a home brewer or yeah. you so work as, making you know, beer or whatever. As we communicate with each other, the word, you know, spreads mm -hmm. and more and more people get turned on to it. So... Mm -hmm. That's that's our job is to single-handedly get the word out. Convert people to drink better beer. Yep, that's the yeah. mission statement, um, and it's working. You know, they they did 10.1 million barrels of craft beer for 2010, and this year it was 11.4 million barrels. So that you know, up by 1.3 million barrels. You know, that's that 13 percent volume. Yeah. That that's that's a good chunk of, of, of beer. Yeah, when you think about you know. S small little microbreweries only producing between five and ten thousand barrels right. of beer. That's a lot. A million barrels is a lot of little breweries. Man. Exactly. You know, you know, Speaking of, I know exactly how beer. many of those uh, little breweries uh, that there are. As a matter of fact, right now, as of April 31st, 2012, there was exactly 2,000 craft brewers wow. in the United States. So that's exceeding the amount before prohibition. Yes. And, and that was always a big deal because yeah. we still never exceeded the amount of prohibition yeah. until 2010. 
right until 2011 right this is the highest amount of breweries it's still not the highest amount of breweries in America ever though it's it's interesting to note that it's just the highest amount of breweries since the 1880s right. so in the 1880s there were this many breweries around you know so I mean that's uh, we but think the size it's so of the the amount of beer obviously being oh drunk is, in is, the is, States, is 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 vastly and high. another uh, it was the neighborhood breweries you know yeah. that they would you know we didn't have the distribution networks that we have now and trucks and all everything yeah. a, as much and so it was harder to get beer from place to place and so there were tons of local small local breweries that were making beer for the local people yeah. around there were you know a yeah, and them. beer is the is the highest consumed beverage behind tea and coffee? I believe so, yeah. 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 So, beer is... Beer's We're getting a two. <laughs> well, behind tea and coffee, so that'd be three. <laughs> or whatever. So, yeah, no, close, but we're, we're itching up. We got we, we got to take out tea. I mean, come on. I mean, well, at least we beat soda. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. There's a lot of soda drinkers. Exactly. So, um, that's, that's pretty much it for the... Uh, for the stats on that. Now, um, we can talk about a couple things. Uh, speaking about how old some of these breweries are, these craft breweries, oh, we yeah. have we have a, a list of breweries. I think it's what, uh, it's like 18 breweries um, that are gonna hit their 25th anniversary this year. Um, some big guys, Goose Island, uh, New Belgium, uh, Deschutes, Rogue, um, you know, a, a couple uh, back east, a couple of east Coast Brooklyn, yeah, Brooklyn. That was one. Yeah, um, several so of these. They're gonna, they're gonna kind of do some collaborative. Efforts There's gonna to, be uh, to uh, yeah to push out a lot of 25th anniversary. Yeah, they were talking about in at the craft Bur uh, breweries conference. Um, they were talking about getting together, and we don't know who's collaborating with who or how many of them they are. But there's some definitely some big heavy hitter names on that. Um, to see, you know, uh, you know, a Rogue, Goose Island collaboration. That sounds pretty good, yeah, you awesome. know. So, uh, so yeah. So we're gonna start seeing some pretty epic collaborations coming in pretty soon. So uh, keep your eye out for that. Also, uh, we want to talk about something since we're talking so much about all this history. Let's talk about some uh, something from history that's uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of a. Uh, Controversial. There's a new brewery coming out of uh, of Seattle, North Pacific Northwest area. Might be Portland. I am not certain. Uh, called Church Key. You hear about this? The canning company. Yeah. It's yeah. it's yeah. It's it's an old school can that actually is just an old steel can that you the actually required. Top. Yeah, the flat top with no way to open it. So except you need an actual separate opener called a Church Key. Um, and uh, what kind of beers inside that? A pilsner, a yeah. basic pilsner. Um, it's actually supposed to be uh, a pilsner from two home brewers like, with using sauce hops. Okay. So, so like a historical style beer. Somewhat, but I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, it started by one of the guys. Um, yeah, I want to get my hands on that. Yeah, we we want to we want to see what it is, see if it actually lives up to the, the hype. But what what scares me about this is. Is the name of the brewery? It's an actual new microbrewery that's that started in in the area, and it's the name of the brewery is Church Key Can Company. That tells me they're making cans. Their focus is the cans, not the focus is the beer. Right. So the cans comes off to so me it's, it's a kind gimmick, of a gimmick, yeah. pretty much. Um, but I I have to admit, uh, I don't mind the idea of that kind of a can. I think it is kind of you know kind of retro cool, but it looks well, the thing about something like hipster, that is, you know? that, is that uh, gimmicks like that or or uh, packaging like that yeah. creates conversation. It does. So just that, I mean, the fact that we're even reporting on something like yeah. this is a conversation piece. So, but you have to have the church key opener, which right. has church key beer on right. it and all that stuff. So yeah. it's this whole so mar yeah. promoting, marketing, advertising thing that... You know, when you're at a bar or a pub or whatever, exactly. you've got these cans, and then, of course, they have a big bucket full of these yeah. church keys to open and this the whole thing. So, so I mean, it just as, you know, if like the beer is good, Dos Equis and Corona and all those things, they've got, 
you know, yeah, they bottle put out openers, tons of bottle and Budweiser openers, whatever. has all these bottle openers, yeah. so that's all part of their thing, you know. Yeah, and you need one to open you it. You want one on your keychain, you know, yeah. you got the church key on the keychain. Yeah, so. you know, I mean, it's, you know, I don't know, if the, it depends on the quality of the beer. What yeah. scares me is it's not... But after, yeah, beer. after seeing some videos and uh, some commercials and stuff, it seems like it's, they're trying to hit the the hipster market. Yeah, you know, like kind of like the retro PBR, PBR crowd. Or yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, in Portland, I mean, PBR is huge. You would think Portland's like this crap beer <laughs> mecca. Dude, they sell the crap out of PBR. Like, it's everywhere, but it's super cheap. It's like $2 a pint yeah, you know, but, where you go. So. But, that doesn't, but it's not good stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I can get a keg of PBR for 65 bucks. Ah, a 15-gallon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've hit me up. Yeah. Hey, you want it super cheap? I'm like, mm, yeah, no, no, no. That's okay. Yeah, no, it's not very good. Um, so, you know, what do you guys think about that? Is it is it just a hip yeah, gimmick, love to or, hear. or is it? Or we love to actually, hear somebody. Has anyone tried it? Yeah, let us know if it's good. Or if I'm you, gonna try to get my hands on some if I can get. Some yeah, or if you have some, uh, if we've got anyone up up north that can get your hands on some, um, ship it. You know, if we want to do a beer trade, we'll 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 yeah, we'll, sure. we'll find some cool stuff to send we'll you in, in exchange for it. Okay. Yeah, dude. Everyone if you just go well. on. Beer pulse. Yeah, that's where we get just, a lot of stuff. Yeah, everything is going. Everyone's going nuts. I mean, mm-hmm. everyone's expanding, expanding, expanding. Sierra Nevada's going to North Carolina. New Belgium's New Belgium. going to North Carolina. Um, Funkworks, Funkworks says on. They're they're getting they're expanding a bit oh, okay. and seeking cool. distribution in, uh, in a couple of states. Uh, yeah. uh, Dogfish Head is growing. They you know mm-hmm. they've got new tanks coming in. All these breweries. There's rumors flying around that we may be able to get founders out here in California. Oh, really? Uh, because they brought out a bunch. Distribution they, or what? Yeah, they flooded uh, at the Craft Beer Con- Brewers Conference. They they sold a bunch of kegs to a bunch of the bars around the area. Oh, okay. And uh, there's uh, there's there's some Test talk. Market. There's some rumors floating around. Oh, we haven't seen anything. So good. We haven't That'd seen awesome. anything concrete, but there's some rumors floating around about that. But everybody's just really just blowing up yeah so. my thing is this and I've been talking about this for a long time is that whenever I have conversations like this about the growth of the beer industry right. and all that stuff I always tell people just we're at a perfect time mm-hmm. to really watch this happen and it, as all this is just getting started mark my words the next five years are gonna be crazy the next mm-hmm. ten years are gonna be really crazy there's a lot of things happening with the growth of craft beer. Right. We're going it, international. Well, That's it means we're seeing this. A lot too. It means this. It means that these small breweries are getting to scale at enough. They're producing enough beer to where they're making enough money to where they can start to really market their product, right. to where they can they can push against. See, craft beer is never going to market the same way that Anheuser Busch or Coors right. or whatever is going to market. Like big, you know, TV commercials. I don't know, Sam Adams has TV commercials. They have TV commercials, so, but if you look at their TV commercials, they're very, very different. Yeah, they're very they're, different. They're not, they're, but they're pushing the flavor. It's always going to have, yeah, it's always going to have a different uh, target market. Yeah, it's almost an, a, an educational aspect. Yeah, that so, so what, but what's happening, though, is the fact that these companies actually have enough money to go to an advertising agency to mm-hmm. say, hey, we've got so much money in our budget, we want to either push to a new market or we either want to push this new brand or whatever it may be before we we never had that ability it was always like we're just trying to you know we're just trying to stay afloat we're just trying to get people to drink our beer in local pubs and bars and all that stuff now that's not necessarily the case and in the next five years that's really after you know all these you know Lagunitas is growing Lagunitas is moving to uh, Chicago. Uh, Chicago I mean, they're expanding their Petaluma uh, facility. So mm-hmm. as as they reach scale with all these big tanks, like Green Flash just built a new brewery. Like as these breweries start to start to right. meet capacity that they're capable of, they're really going to start to see that they're investing all this money now, and they're going to reap some of the benefits of those investments yeah. in the next few years. And, and we're really going to see, you know, a lot more of these beers in supermarkets. Ralphs. Their CMO, I guess, just uh, created a whole new marketing plan with all of their cold cases huh. to have deliberately have a section for craft beer That's in cool. every single Ralph's cold case. 
then it's and if you go to any Ralph's, you're gonna see that. So that means yeah, I've seen the know, brewery at his at this Albertsons right over here. Yeah, Albertsons which is, is nuts. Albertsons the brewery, is right behind them. Yeah. We have a really good Albertsons in our in our uh, strip mall that we're at right here. Yeah, and they have a bunch of craft beer. Not all of them are like that. Yeah, no, no, no. Because the one by my house is it's kind of done by by you know income area, right. but territory. You know, but uh, yeah, it's it's really getting big. People are going starting to go international. The craft brewers. Uh, or the Brewers Association has put together a list of about 15 different brewers, and I don't know what those brewers are. I think Sierra Nevada is one of them, and they're calling it the Export Series. And I know their first target is Australia. Also, Beijing just had in China just had their very first craft brew festival, and Whoa. it drew over like 2,000 people. 2,000 people showed up to this. So craft well, beer craft is starting to be big up. in Tokyo for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really big for a yeah. while. So uh, you know, and it continues to Japan. It really continues. Yeah, to so we're gonna Japan. we're. Uh, it's not gonna be long before we start exporting uh, stuff. I mean, there's still. We remember when Stone was talking about um, a well, European. Well, craft beer's really yeah, craft beer's expansion. really taken off in Australia, and New Zealand. It yeah. really has taken off. Yeah, so you know, it's gonna be really interesting as these. Yeah, as it, of today, though, Stone uh, or as of now, not necessarily today, but Stone has basically pulled back from their yeah. uh, Europe endeavor. Yeah. I think European, they're going to focus. They're European. They're really going to focus adventure. on San Diego and really there we go. Well, we're almost out of beer. Yeah, that means we're, we're almost time. done. So, cheers. Get out there and drink some craft beer. All the news that's, that's fit, fit to, to drink. drink. Yeah, you almost yes. forgot there. <laughs>